Put on the beat. It's going okay. How about you? Not bad. Good to hear. Yeah, Been a while. Yeah. Been a while. <laughs> yeah, man. Time goes by quick, but at the same time, it's like, gosh, when was that? That was back in April already. Already summer's by. That's crazy. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago. I know. I know. How's things going, man? Things are going all right. Doing a little yeah. bit here and there. You've got, uh, you've got, uh, you mentioned Nick. Um, was he, he going to be in on this as well? Or we no, gonna he's going to, he's going to um, talk to you after we're done here. Okay, cool. And see when he can get you with uh, the betting thing. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's been talking to me nonstop about it. <laughs> well, after this last fight on Saturday, the last pay-per-view, there are some good underdogs to bet on in that. Um, I think it kind of raised it. It seems like lately people have been talking about it a little bit more for whatever reason. And I wonder if it was that was the reason. You know, Henry winning and then our girl JJ winning. She was in yeah, the Yeah, congrats so, on that. Yeah, man. I was going to get to that one. Yeah. But um, a lot of people yeah. underestimate her. Yeah, no, it, it's crazy, too, because she's, um, she's so talented. And, and a lot of it is, you know, just coming together as a team with her and, and having the right – um, just the right people. So uh, this time we were able to kind of um, use all the best resources from from the team and and really just me, Pat, and Mike, and, um, you know, Zach helping out and a couple other training partners, and we had a great camp. And then, you know, Rose was just so helpful. I mean, constantly training with us every day, um, helping us game plan, and it, it was really good for her her development as well, you know, just being on the other side of that and being a student of this. And um, so this is great all the way around, man. Um, Good. Yeah. So now I got to ask, I heard a rumor about Rose. I heard mm-hmm. about some about a, um, an injury that's going to set her back a little bit. Yeah, that, there was uh she does have an old neck injury. that she yeah, I heard, I heard a right. shoulder slash neck. Yeah, it's more of in the neck. It looks like, you know, like the preliminary stuff on it was that she actually broke her neck a long oh. time ago and it's rehealed. So I don't think it's going to be anything that that's an issue. If anything, it was more of uh, knowing what the problem is. You know, we, there's a while she complains about her neck a lot. And it's, you know, so, yeah, you got to tough it out. It's always in the middle of a camp or something, you know, and it's like, well, how serious is it? No, and it was just more like degenerating kind of, but also not her not knowing if it's a really an injury or not. So just knowing what it is has already been beneficial because now she knows what to address and how to address it and, it's really helped her keep her head in more <laughs> safer positions. From you know, one thing about Rose, she's really hard to choke. So for years, she'd like put herself in head and arm chokes, and just people be trying to squeeze her head off, and she won't tap. That's easy. <laughs> yeah, and I think just wearing tear. But for the most part, she's all right, man. It, it's you know, we wanted to fight on this Denver card in November pretty badly, but somehow the UFC made that a Fox card. Yeah, not a, not a paper. You would have caught it. Would have been a pay per view. Yeah, and word was they just kind of misscheduled everything. I mean, I don't know how you miss on that. This is the 25th anniversary in Denver. You know, it, it, Denver okay. sells out. The, the Pepsi Center will sell out. And then uh, it being local, it'd get more pay-per-view buys out of here, especially with Denver fighters on it. So, to me, I think they kind of missed the boat on it. And J.J. wants to fight on it. So, we, we're potentially looking at that. Rose, we we looking ahead for sure, but... It's crazy when you're holding the tram status because you're not chasing anything anymore. So <laughs> now she's yeah, got two times. Watching. Oh, dude, it changes everything. Like, normally you're coming up the ranks and you're always looking at who you got. You can't really look at who you got next. You don't know who they're going to give you and whatnot. But at the champ status, you get to look down at everybody and kind of prepare for, you know, a handful of people at a time and kind of everybody's on your radar. Maybe. But, um, you know, Rose, too, it's, it, it's very challenging to negotiate, or I should say navigate this thing um, for her to get the most out of it, you know? And, and we, we, of course, wanted to rematch Joanna and solidify um, her as the new champion, and it wasn't a fluke and all this and that. But now the UFC, we, you know, I personally, and I know Amanda too, really like to see them take care of her too, you know, especially as the injury kind of opened our eyes up like, hey, man, she could be champ today, hurt tomorrow. And they they have yet um, really, I, I feel, held her up to the position that she should be at in the UFC as, as one of the new stars and new faces. And, and just, you know, I, I say here in Denver, you know, there should be a big billboard in Denver. 
gear that the UFC pays for their marketing, just telling Denver what this is about. I mean, it would help their market so much, you know, and, and I just don't think they utilize it. So we're trying to find ways to make the most of it here and then really look at the Andraj Carolina fight to win that. Right, yeah. We can get That's something in before the end of the year. Right, and that, that makes the most sense, that fight. And I honestly think I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Carolina wins it. That's a tough fight, though. It is. It is tough. It's a. It's interesting, right? Because Andraz just kind of walks forward, and she's really tough and really strong. But man, Carolina, she's got that Eastern European heavy boned. Nobody just picks her up and throws her. I mean, I, I think she's the most solid, like solid to move a straw weight in the division. Like she is strong. We we're surprised with Rose. It's like how strong she is. She actually made. Rose not look very strong, and not many people can do that. <laughs> and and Andrade is so short that that leverage isn't very good. I mean, she's strong, and it, it, it's doing well against people shorter than her or her size, you know. But it, even against Joanna, you know, just a little bit taller, and she doesn't look quite as powerful. And and Carolina's got that that height and heaviness to her that I I think Andrade is going to run into some problems personally. But um, that that's going to be a good one. What's the date on that? Is that that's the, uh, 228 or is that 229? Oh, they put it all the way in February? I don't remember. I can look oh, that I up. I thought it was coming up in October. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was in October. If it's all the way in February, then that really changes things a little bit because we're not sure who to fight. Right. Now, there's the part of us wouldn't fight. 228, today. September 8th. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. So it's coming up. So with that scenario, we might be ready by November as well, What it, you know, the next pay-per-view card. But then there's the... You know, then I think that's the Connor card coming up. Two twenty nine. Which oh, that's the Connor one's two twenty nine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we would we would most likely be before that, or we really like. To we fight we don't need another incident with that. <laughs> we don't. We and it's messed up, man. Because Rose doesn't want to be on the card with him, which is the most highest paying card. Right. That's it's interesting. Yeah. It makes it kind of like. I don't. I don't blame her though. You know, and he looks like he's going to get off Scott Free in a lot of ways. So, you know, he already beat most of the charges. So she's got her own case going in some to some degree. And we're trying not to let that be anything and nor expect anything from it. But it, it is now a thing for, you know, being on the same card with him and Rose now. And that definitely affects, you know, her mentality and maybe her pocketbook. So, um, yeah. I'm sure tough. counter money would be nice. but I know, I know, man. You know, we're all trying to work and earn what does, and, and it's, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, but, yeah, JJ, um, you know, with with Rose, those two together right now is, is, a, is a super combo um, to sharpen each other's skills. And and um, so I'm, I'm really excited. It's, it's, it's you know, like even with Rose not being super active right now, we've got her so active. You know, she's never looked better. And, I told her, you want to fight when you're 26 or you turn 26 in June because this is the best version of her we've ever seen. And you wouldn't want a year of that to go to waste. Um, so she's trying to rehab whatever little nagging injury she's got. And, and then just, you know, the UFC takes care of her and puts on a good card, and, and that's all we're looking for. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's crazy, crazy world, this MMA world. It's, it's, yeah, I hate that. The truth. It's been a little crazier with the females, you know. Oh. Just aren't. They're just still newer than the males, kind of. What did you think about the Henry fight? Oh man, that was a that was actually a very entertaining fight. Right. A lot of people. Cool. I mean, I went out on a limb the first time and picked Henry, and then I did it again with the second time. Same story with Rose. I just had that gut feeling. Yeah, yeah. I said his wrestling is going to be the difference, and everyone's like, "Well, Mighty Mouse has great ground game in his own." I'm like, but once he gets taken down, is what can he do? Right. Right. Now, Henry's Henry's another level, um, and and he's amazing. You know, and he doesn't get the credit of a wrestler no. that a lot of the and his striking has improved him a lot. Yeah, and and using them together, using just the it might have been Rogan said it. Somebody said just using those different little quirks. I think it's Cormier. You know, just different nuances to kind of mix in his shots. You know, give you more to think about, and and it works great. But I. My question is, and it's crazy because I was out to fight, so I didn't get a chance to really sit and watch that one round for round. And, um, you know, I, I know Demetrius, I mean, we've been on a lot of cards with him, and, man, it seems just so awesome to watch him and Matt Hume, how they go about their their business as champ. And, and it, it's really actually hard to see him lose. And then Henry, on the other case, we're bringing him in to help with Rose 
Oh, dude, and, that's awesome. Um, before he was champ, we were already talking with him. Yeah. And so he's great. You know, you can't root against him. But I don't know if you can give the title away on a split decision like that. You know, I, mean, I thought he, I thought Henry did enough to win, but I can see normally you have to beat the champ to win. Like, right. And, and I can even, see a lot of people. I mean, yeah. It was a close fight. Could have gone either way. And that's the part that worries me. Your opinion, though, definitely Henry got the two or three rounds. And that seemed to be most people's thoughts on it was you were going to, you know, what happened, who got the better of who, it was close, but really three to two Henry. And to me, I, I don't know, man. I would really have to sit and watch it to be convinced of that. I know that Demetrius looks like he tore his ACL in the he fight. He tore his uh, LCL in, I think he oh, took like the second okay. round. Right. And that, that's exactly what I mean about that's why the champ deserves the benefit of the doubt. That's why you don't know if something like that happened maybe. And when you got a real close fight and there's it's three to two, on the, you know, it's like, yeah, you give, the, you give it to the champ just because maybe he was a little early. Like you want to see the next person definitively win, you know. And, and Pat Barry said it's funny. He's like, when you're going to go – when you're going to be king or you're going to be queen, you're telling Rose, you've got to go storm the castle, kill everybody, go upstairs, and chop the queen's head off. That's <laughs> how you know you're queen. You, know, you chop her head off. You don't just beat her up at the door and then somehow sneak in the house. You know, it's, you've know, you got to chop off the king's head to, to be the new king. And the new lion kills the old lion. And that's not what happened. No. So, so that's, it, it, I'm happy for Henry. And then Henry, poor Henry, he's got his Olympic gold is kind of tarnished it's, too among I've, the wrestlers. I've been a fan of Henry since I started wrestling in high school, and then I went to the 2012 Olympic trials where I saw wow. him lose and retire. Wow. That was like an well, eye-opener. Well, you know, they changed the, the scoring the year he won it. So it's always been, they call it the dark years of wrestling. There, there's a time, to make it easy, to explain it easy, the way I was explaining, because I didn't really follow it real close, but uh, obviously very close with some very talented wrestlers. And in my opinion, is he looks like he's the best wrestler to me in MMA. He always has. I've always thought that. But his goal, basically, the sport, the scoring system was different when he won it. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's the argument that had it been the old way, he wouldn't have won it. And had it been the new way, a bunch of guys would have won it that didn't. And then when they changed it the year after he won, he didn't even qualify for the world scheme. So it was like, he probably wouldn't have won it. But to me, like, basically, it's like this. There's three matches, right? And let's say he loses the first yeah. one seven to two, and the other one's two to one. You know, he didn't actually get enough points total to actually be the gold medalist. And, and that's what other champions, you know, didn't have to deal with that. Like, he would have lost in other years, as they try to claim. Um, but. You know, it's it, you rise to the event too. You know, if that's how you're supposed to win it, then then that's how you won it. So I, I personally don't discredit it at all. I think it, actually the scoring system he did is more legit. I think personally, but I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm not part of that history of years and years of guys doing it one way, then they switch it, and now somebody wins and that guy's close. You know? That is one but, thing I've always hated about the international styles of wrestling is they can never keep a similar score and everything like it's always right. got to change i understand you want to make it better and whatnot create more action but you got to keep some parts of it similar to what it has been oh you have no basis of comparison then you can't base like guys from 20 years ago next to guys today you know if it's basically the same systems then you got at least some you know basis of comparison that's that's logical but you know, I just look at what we're dealing with today in MMA wrestling in itself, and, and it's um, it's different anyways, you know, and he, to me, is the best. And That's, that's one I, thing I've always wondered is what the difference is between, like, actual wrestling versus MMA wrestling. Well, yeah, you know, just more conceptual than anything, you know, like, you, you've got to keep your head up a little bit, you know, like, you can't shoot on people and have your head is quite as low due to people being able to elbow on the side of the head. Right. Of course, guillotine. Um, you know, and, and, and then, you know, the habits in the turtle, most of this would be corrected in just training, but uh rest of the turtle, you know, he's going to pop his head right up. And um, so some of the defensive things 
you know, take some adjusting to. But, you know, I was talking about it today. You know, there's all these wrestlers at the top right now that are holding belts. And it, it goes back and forth. It's been a while since I've seen so many wrestlers holding it. And, um, you know, it always brings up the discussion, you know, like, you, the, it's amazing, you know, the wrestling is, that's the best. And it's like, I disagree. Just, you know, I, I love wrestling. I disagree not just because I'm a, a black belt in GST and this and that. That doesn't matter. What I, what my problem is, is, it's because they're the best athletes that are training how to cut weight, do one-on-one combat sport. They're actually being conditioned the closest thing to MMA you can find. Um, you know, rarely in, in taekwondo or other strikes where you're really cutting weight the same way or, you know, they're similar, but the grind of grappling is in MMA where it's, it's just you got to get used to that, and it takes a lot of time. So they they get used to that and hips and – but if I can keep the best 170 or in all of Denver, the best 155 or you know, rest teams only got the best of each weight. You know what I mean? It's it's a different story, you know. And I and I've talked about this before, and and to me they just blend perfectly. But you know, you're seeing the best athletes, and then wrestling is so amazing for the sport, mainly because of how the kids are brought up. It's just like MMA almost, you know, um, the the suffering part at least, especially in <laughs> the mental well, suffering. suffering part, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can't do that in jiu-jitsu. People will quit. <laughs> You're trying to make sure people are having fun for the most time, you know. Right. You're not trying to make a team at the jiu-jitsu club, you know. And, and then the competitors are different, you know, and then they weed themselves out. And, and that's, um, you know, a lot of my best competitors were collegiate wrestlers and now are, are into jiu-jitsu, you know. So it's it's just interesting now that you see all these great all these really good champions and i think almost all of them are wrestlers it's yeah really i think those like six former wrestlers are champs or something right yeah and even khabib with the sambo is basically russian wrestling you know? yeah i get into that argument plenty about khabib and wrestling versus sambo yeah yeah it's it's a tough argument because sambo's fighting to the death and wrestling still a sport but if you took Daniel Cormier and taught him Sambo, he'd be the baddest Sambo player ever. You know what I mean? Yeah. He'd blow away could be even some of these guys. The same with Henry Sueda. Sueda, I think. You know, it's, they're, they're such good athletes. If you put jiu-jitsu in their hand, it'll make it look amazing, you know? And he, though, I don't know, man. He'll break your leg off. What wrestler's going to deal with that? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, it's interesting. At the same time, a good wrestler – We'll put him down on his back, and he won't do nothing. He'll sit there and just get pounded on, you know. And I to see anybody doing that to be like, <laughs> you know, that's what uh, makes this, this sport great. Kevin Lee says he's the guy to do that, but I don't think so. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, first, I guess it's Connor. We'll see. I actually am you know, picking it right now. Connor's going to win that fight. I actually am picking Connor, too. Yeah, I, I think he's so underestimated. Uh, his ability to grapple right now, too. And, that is you know, a big is, thing right there. His grappling is so underestimated. It is, and it gets better. Like It's like people thought Pat Berry couldn't grapple, you know, and, and really at the top level, you, you had problems back then. But you know how good someone get within a year or two? All he's got to do is just keep athlete. practicing. Absolutely, and through his training and everything else. And, and I, what I see is a problem that uh, Khabib might have actually taken him down. And I see Khabib... I see Khabib actually really having trouble with that. And and yeah, I know he's great at it, but we we're, everybody's kind of on to it. And yeah. we see, and his striking is further behind than Connor's grappling. So. And see, what, if you rewatch Connor versus Nate one, at the end of the first round, Nate took him down and Connor swept him and it got into full mount. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> good, good call, man. And he stuffed, that. he stuffed all of... Eddie's takedowns and a majority of Nate's takedowns in both fights. Right. And, I mean, who do you have a problem with? Uh, well, somebody took him down real hard, but he ended up beating him up. Everybody's like talking about, oh, Mendez took him down and blah, Mendes, blah, blah. Right. But right. he was also at 145, and he had, a, I think, a bummed ACL. Right, right. He's I mean, no excuses right. or anything, but. Man, he didn't prepare for Mendez. That was a short-notice fight. Yeah, he was preparing for him. Aldo. Right, totally different. Totally different preparation. Probably didn't work on his his timing with his sprawls or any of that, you know. And it makes a difference, actually. It's all timing in this. And it could be, you know, if he's looking for uh, to be to be most of his takedowns are in close. But yeah, but we know awesome. he's looking for that takedown. Right, and it's usually from a clinch. Yeah, and, that, you know, 
I have stated that. I picture this fight going, Khabib can't close the distance, and he shoots an open space and gets clipped, and then yeah. it's over. I his, see that too. His takedowns in open space aren't the greatest. They're there, but right. it's not the best. He likes to drag you in the clinch and then throw yes. you from there. Absolutely. That's exactly what you get, which it goes back to just like with uh, J.J. on my fight. We're underdogs, and I'm looking at this thing going, how are we underdogs when that girl has to take us down to win? That's the worst game plan as a coach. I hate that. I mean, I'm a first-degree brag, bro, man. All my, all my coaching is ground-related, all of it. You but can't just do that, though. You ground, have to no, prepare for everything. Yes, go ahead. It, it is. It's terrible because, truly, if we're that one-dimensional and I have to have my fighter take you down, I, and I've been in this situation many times, it is tough, and usually it's against you. Usually the odds are against you. And that's why we knew with Jay didn't fight going into this. We really looked at it, and we said, yeah, she's going to have to take us down. That's, that's a problem. Even when she gets us to the ground, she has to finish now. Like, that's, that's seriously bad. Where most, most times, you should be able to finish wherever it goes, you know, and, and that's what you want. Now, Khabib could be that if his striking was, you know, half as good as Connor's right now, where he could just keep Connor off from score a little bit, get Connor to be frustrated – you know, to where they were, through the striking, was able to initiate a clinch. But if he's just going to try to to clinch, you know, is his number one to try to get Connor to the ground, I feel like that's a tough way to win. And Connor's an underdog, and I would take that bet every day. But I, I fight day, he won't. He won't <laughs> that's be, a good he way won't to make your money. <laughs> yeah, you have to do it now. By fight day, he won't be. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it was the same with Jay. It was almost a three to one. It was ridiculous. I was calling everybody I knew, man, bet on her that on her this is crazy by fight it was down to uh, plus 130 but she was almost a three to one underdog for a while and then the p- real people of mma know more of the game plan and, and the bets you know a lot of money right. came in they, the close, they get closer oh yeah much closer but at first so connor is going to be even money or worse come fight time but you know even right now i'd be surprised if uh, it's still that much of an underdog i'd have mm-hmm. to look it up but when i saw that i was like wow now, that's pretty – people love Khabib. Right now, so, but. I got to ask, did you watch Yolanda's fight with Tisha Torres? I did. I had great interest in that because Tisha came to train with us. And after I watched the fight, I was like, Tisha, I wish you would have actually game planned with us a little bit because she didn't. And we've been studying Yolanda for quite some time, oh. obviously, the two fights. Um you know, so we, we definitely gave her some pointers of this and that. She does this. And and then in the fight, we, I noticed that her main game plan was to try and take it down. And, and I was kind of uh, bummed about that because I think Tisha would have done better had she done old Tisha and just charged in a couple times. And, and when she would do that, it looked a little better, you know. But it's Tisha. She goes through decisions. She's impossible to beat. Nobody can beat this girl up, really. <laughs> she just... She goes to the decision, and she usually wins, and now she's having a hard time finding that against the top tier, you know. Uh, she's losing decisions now. But I thought she did well. I thought she fought not to lose more than to win. And um, her game plan to take down Ioana, you know, is is just one that's been tried and failed with so many people before. I just couldn't understand that. That's why she wanted to do that. But – I don't know. You have Yolanda punch you in the face a couple of times. You might want to grab her and try to stop her from doing that, you know? So I'm not the one standing out there getting punched in the face to say, hey, why aren't you boxing with her a little more, you know? She probably felt safer in those closer distances. But, yeah, I, I thought and, she, she and, lost for sure. In all honesty, though, Yolanda didn't really impress me in that fight. Right. Yolanda said right. she felt like she was better than ever, but honestly, I – she didn't. Yeah, I agree. I, I thought I thought she was going to look much better. I did too. So no pressure on her. Bad. She's hungry. Yeah, Tisha makes people look bad, though. She does. I mean, even when Rose beat her in Florida, and we were talking about that, there's a big red tide problem right now, right? Well, Rose got the red tide when she fought Tisha. But no excuses. She was sick. But still, even if she'd have been healthy, Tisha is just hard to pin down, punch, and hold, and actually end her. She doesn't give you a lot of opportunity to finish her. She's hard to get a clean shot on. And so with that being said, you know, I, I will add that back to that in a little bit before I get too judgmental on Joanna. But 
yeah, yeah, he didn't look that great. And but I'm telling you, man, there's interviews they wouldn't even release for me in the UFC years ago because I thought they, I think they thought I was an idiot, and I probably sounded like an idiot because I'd tell them, I said, Joanna is not as impressive as everybody thinks. She knocks no one out. I mean, I was one of the first people I knew saying this. I mean, I, too, too many people had the Joe Rogan rose petal glasses on for a minute, and, and were just so impressed with her. But she was just fighting grapplers. She hadn't fought any strikers yet. And I kept telling people she can't be the greatest. When she, I mean, even Angela Hill, I'd like to see her fight Angela Hill. I think that would actually be a decent fight. Angela Hill can strike. Speaking of Angela Hill, she's fighting Courtney Casey in a couple weeks. Mm. That's mm. a good fight. That, I that, that think is. Casey's going to pull that one out. Yeah, you know, I, I, it's tough because, you know, I, I, I'm such a fan, but at the same time, in the big fights, you know, it never pulls them off, and I have to think she's going to win it because of that, you know? She's um, lost some close decisions lately. She has, and, and she's just, she's got so much talent, but I just don't feel like she has, and, and I don't know this close enough to speak to Finn, I just get the feeling she doesn't have the right progression right now. Like, she has so much raw to work with, and she always has, but she doesn't seem like she's improved as much as I think she could have, you know. In fact, we called her out with JJ. Um, they asked us who we want to fight, and we brought her name up just because stylistically it is a good fight for JJ, believe it or not. Um, and it's it's a name. But, you know, at the same time, you know, they you know, go back to Joanna, it's like a striker. That's what we want to see. You know, JJ was Joanna's uh, first round pick in the show. Yeah, I remember and that. She was her main training partner for Claudia, and she dropped Joanna a couple times, straight up. In practice, one time for sure, and um, you know, and, and maybe it was JJ dropped Joanna. Yeah, it was just probably, you know, in, in a whatever far the light. Yeah, yeah, sparring. Maybe Joanna wasn't expecting it. That stuff kind of stuff happens, but it got Joanna's attention to her. That was like her main training partner for a while for the Claudia fight. And it, to me, it was like, of course she is. There's no strikers in the strawweight division. I mean, if we really want to look at it, who is the top striker? Like it was Joanna. And then there was nobody else. Nobody else. Right. Angela Hill had some decorations. You know, who else? There's Angela who else. Hill was doing hung in there her own against Andrade even. Right, right. She just she just doesn't have quite enough, you know. I'm hoping someday she does, you know, turn the corner later in her career like a Robbie Lawler or somebody, you know, that she just seems like she should do better than, than she does sometimes. I mean she's even cut from the UFC. She went to Invicta and looked way better than everybody in Invicta. And then comes back to the UFC and seems to just kind of gatekeep almost, you know. And I just feel she's better than that. But um, she's one of the only strikers. I believe she has some some significant titles in kickboxing. But other than that, um, there just isn't that many. So, you know, on a, you know, Keisha is not a striker. She has that taekwondo charging style kind of. But, you know, she's. She's going to get dotted up against the Joanna, and I thought she actually did pretty good. She didn't get cut. She didn't. She made Joanna look bad, really. You know, Joanna didn't look like she has any finishing ability, um, especially in three rounds. You know, and she she, didn't, did. she got tagged a, a bit, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think she got hurt at the end of, was it round one or two? She got hit with a big shot, and then she forced a clinch. Right. That's. I mean, that's what I would have liked to see Tisha do, is just, just, Keisha's the fastest human being, I swear. And she and she was in great shape at that fight. She one of her last practices at 303. And, I mean, she was just on point. And I was like, if you're going to fight, this is – she looks peaked, you know. To me, it was the game planning that she chose to go with. I honestly thought if she could have done a couple things with some takedowns instead of just clinch work. Right. She just pretty yeah. much clinched. She didn't um, really shoot at all. I mean, like pick up a leg or, you know what I like to see is when they, you know, put up against the face, the fence and then break off and punch. And the next time, then go for the takedown. The next time, so you, you just kind of mix it up a little bit. So maybe you want is not sure. When she's 100% sure you're trying to get her to the ground, her takedown defense is too strong. And what she does is she steals momentum. As you're trying to take her down, she's picking off shots on you and scoring while you're sitting there. Even if they don't count as a scoring, you get out of the clinch and you're almost you messed up, you man. You got to see you in the face. She punched you in the head the whole time. Both your arms are around her legs or, or whatever the case may be. So that's her game. And it's like, you don't want to play that game with her. You've actually got to get her going backwards. 
and she can't fight very well. Not many people can, but especially her Muay Thai does not go well backwards. No. You know, and, you know, Pat Barry said it. I don't know if you saw it. He put out a big thing on her because she was bad mouth and rose. And he basically said, you could Google the interview. I, he told me, I haven't even listened to the interview. I saw it all over the place. So, uh, you know, because we talk about it all the time. It's like, you know how good you want to be if you would just admit her faults and get better? Like, mm-hmm. She won't admit she lost the first time. You know, how do you get better? She won't admit the second time that she lost. How do you she get better? She the strikes in the first fight. Won't even admit that. Yeah. Nope. She said she posted her hand to get up. Right. And then the second fight, she, she won that one as well. And it's like, you are never going to be the best version of yourself, Joanna, until you admit your faults and get better from them. You have to you have to recognize them to get better than them. And to me, she was a great champion. And not being champion, um, a little subpar. You know, I'm a little disappointed on, on how she's how she's picking up her pieces to go back for her quest to be champion, you know, and and I just I, I'm a little confused by it. I you know she's such a tough human being and I really respect her, but at the same time it's like, come on man, admit when you're wrong, admit when you've lost and move on and get better from it. And if you don't, I don't believe her future's that great. Well now that we're talking about Yolana, after her fight with Tisha in the press conference, well you know the whole thing with Rose where she said only way she'll get a third fight is if she admits that Rose is better than her and the real champ. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, there yeah, was a, a reporter who asked her that, if she would ever admit that. She put her head down and almost just started crying. <laughs> no, I, I got to see that. You have to send me the link. I'll see if I can find that. Yeah, it was yeah, no, I, I know she said, you know, you are never better than me. You will bow down to me, you know, and. Some of it, I think, you just look for an identity. It's like right. one minute she's Queen saying, of the straw weight. Yeah. Then she's saying, now, be a good person. She says, I'm a good person. It's like, if you're a good person, you're not trying to make people bow down in front of you. I've never met somebody <laughs> that's a good person that does that. So, I mean, she's just confused. She's got a little bit of an identity crisis. Her nickname for crying out loud was Joanna Champion. So, what is it now? You're not Joanna Champion. Because of Joanna Queen, I, I don't know what she's trying to identify yeah, herself with, but... <laughs> she's trying to identify herself as the best, which she is not. She's not, and she was at one point, and, and there's a chance she could recapture that, but that's all probably. The only way I would see her recapturing the title is I want to see her get one more fight mm-hmm. outside of a championship fight, and if somehow Rose lost the title to Andrade or Carolina, right. which I don't see happening, but it's possible. Well, it's, it's possible. possible. And we, we would do a third fight for sure. What Rose is saying, too, about admit I'm the best, I'm the champ, because we don't admit, think she's going to get any better. So she at least admits that. Right. And we, Rose, we're on the mission to fight the best always. Like, And right now she still looks like she's the best until the Tisha fight. And it's like, you know, she's the same. And she hasn't learned from her losses, it doesn't look like. And it doesn't look like she's improving. And, and with the second fight with Rose, that was she looked good. I mean, she looked ready. And she threw the kitchen sink at Rose, and it wasn't enough. So go back to the drawing board. You didn't win and get better. And she didn't do that. And it looks like she stayed the same or possibly digressed or at least did not re-identify herself as, as something, you know, new and better. And and the old version of her, is Rose was designed to beat her. I mean, it, end period. From the minute we've lost the belt, we've been studying her. And we know everything she's going to do. And if she doesn't change it, it's not an interesting fight. But if she goes out and let's say she knocks somebody out, Whoa, okay, now we're starting to get interested. Right. Let's say she goes up to 25 division and takes out Valentina. Okay, now we want to fight her. Let's go. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's, Got to, like, earn it. Go. Yeah, go earn it. Not only earn it, but make us want to fight you again. Like, that's the Joanna. We want right, to fight. that's, that's a know? fight. A lot of people are yeah. still calling that a fluke. A lot of people I still see are calling fight number one a fluke. Oh, yeah. And then fight number two a wrongful decision. Right, but it's out there. So it's, it's enough to try to make a third. Just to prove but, it. But, you know, like, I would go up and fight. Like, she wouldn't. She lost to Valentina three times. And uh, she would never admit it, you know, even those fights. She said she got robbed. And she would never admit she lost. And so that's one of the things that Pat said, too. Go up, he mentioned to Valentina. Like, every time she's lost, only to Rose, only to Valentina. She won't admit it. And, um... You know, it's just, 
how's she how's she going to keep going on and expecting to better stuff she's not going to admit where she needs to get better? So go fight Valentina again. That's what I say. Move up to 25. Valentina's probably going to win the title. She's like a 900-to-1 favorite right now. And I don't believe there's anyone in the 25 division that can even challenge her. And that's a great fight. Go up there and challenge Joanna. And let's see that fight. And then if she could beat you know, if she could beat Valentina, do a super fight with Rose for sure. Go after the 25 title. <laughs> right. Um, if if she's got it, you know. So that 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 would be my advice in her career right now. You know, it's like clean out the straw the strawweight division, get another fight under you because that last one wasn't that great. Go fight somebody else. I don't know who at this point. Oh my, yeah, I was, that's what I'm doing right now. Looking at the rankings, and besides Claudia, we don't need to see another Claudia fight with her. Nah, no, I got the there's Andrade the and then there's Carolina. They're fighting probably number one contender. Right. Tisha just lost to her. Carla just lost to right, but Carla arguably won. So that's a great fight. Tatiana, in my opinion. Yes, that's what I was getting. I was going to say the winner of Elise and um, Michelle Watterson or Tatiana Suarez. Tatiana, for sure, I believe, is the most talented wrestler, the most new age girl in the strongest division. Her striking was really bad a year or so ago. I would like to see that improve before I, I really cash in on her. But she's the woman's Henry. She's the woman's Cormier. Like, she's the wrestler. And as far as it was the old wrestler, right, and here comes the torch. If she can beat, if she can beat her, if she can beat Esparza, then that's an interesting fight because I don't think uh, Joanna fought a serious wrestler yet. No. Like, Esparza was all messed up when she fought her. And she might really make Tatiana look like Esparza. I, that, you know, who knows. But I think she would be somebody that is on the radar. And really the girl that JJ fought, uh, there was rumors that she was two fights away uh, from the title of Rose. She was going to beat JJ, call Rose out, and maybe fight um, Mackenzie or the winner of Esparza. And, and Tatiana, which that girl is a great grappler, but as we saw, she has a lot, lot to grow in her striking, um, Poliana, Viana. But it's uh, a lot of grapplers still, you know, a lot of grapplers in the women. And, um, you know, there's not, not a whole lot of strikers. I'd like to see some of the women's boxers get involved. But, you know, it's um, – it's interesting. We'll, we'll see what it what it boils down to. I'm not sure who's on a fight. There's really not anybody coming to mind. So now, what do you think of the return of Nate Diaz? You know, it's I love the Diaz brothers, and I, and I like the excitement of them coming back. Um, it, it, you know, to fight at any time. I mean, headline in a pay per view. You know, I, I just before he fought Connor. I mean. He was just a regular, regular dude, lightweight. You know what I mean? Like now, yeah, I mean, we love the Diaz brothers, but I mean, he's got 11 losses. You know what I mean? It's not like he's an up and coming guy. So I, I think he's going to be real rusty. I think he's fighting because he already lost a lot of his money, maybe. <laughs> he needs to make some money again. But all in all, it's good. It's a great thing. Would I fork out money on pay per view? It's a pay per view card, right? Yeah, he's fighting, uh, I think it's either the co-main or the fight before the co-main on USC 230 versus Dustin Poirier. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I'd have to say Dustin's going to win that. Um, and then I, I think he's going to put Nick to bed as far as the excitement goes with him. But I think he's going to be fighting for his whole life. <laughs> I just love the fight. So it's good. I'm a little mixed on it. I, I like it. I just don't know how – he should get such a high up contender shot when he's been out so long. And really before that, he hasn't been relative in so long, relevant in so long that, you know, it just, it's interesting, right? It's interesting. He's a baller. <laughs> I know. I want to see him. I'll probably end up watching that for sure. <laughs> what, do you th- what do you think about it? That's, I don't know. That's, mm. Those guys are something. The Diaz bros are They're exciting. And that's yeah. Yeah, I, I I'm interested. I'm always interested. I think it should be a Fox card though. That's all. And and the pay per view card should be saved for big title fights and, and things like that. Who else on the card? Is he just headlining it then? Um, 
two thirty. So it's right now it's scheduled as the main event because they don't have a real main event. Uh, but yeah, that will be moved down. There's um, Jacare versus Branch. Yeah. Romero versus Costa. Brunson versus Adesanya. Mm-hmm. Those are the main main fight. Yeah, it's it's tough to say that that's a card that I would want to pay for. Really, I, do, I think I... this could be a crazy card. Yeah, I like it. Especially in Madison Square Garden. You know, they're having in Madison Square. Yeah, it'll be good. I mean, Jock Ray is getting a little old. Yeah, he is. So you is know? David Branch, though. Yeah, that's true. That's and so is the, well, yeah, well, he's a freak of nature. He is a freak. That's I once nice. saw UFC 225, and I saw that fight, Yoel versus Whitaker, too. And oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that I tell you, man, those guys, that middleweight division, it's, it's, it's like speed, athleticism, and power all mixed. You get it all right there, that 185. Right. Um, you were at the Whitaker fight? Yeah. Nice. That was my uh, first ever UFC event. Nice. What do you think about Whitaker's champ? Whitaker? Ah, dude, that guy is something. That dude's got a crazy chin on him. <laughs> no, Very athletic, know. good movement. It's, you know, I don't really see anybody who can beat him right now besides Romero. Everyone's thinking Kelvin's going to beat him, but I I don't see it. I think Whitaker's yeah. going to be too much for Kelvin. Yeah, it's, it's tough. I'm in the middleweight division, I don't, there's nobody right now that I would. That's a that. weird division, yeah. you know. It is. It is. Then he got uh, Pierre said he'd be interested in fighting the winner of Connor Khabib, and that would be great. Like either one of those guys against Pierre would be a great. Uh, I'd pay for that card for sure. Yeah. Kevin Lee keeps calling out uh, GSP. That's kind of funny. Yeah. Well, you know, Kevin Lee could be the new thing. We're gonna have to wait and see. I gotta see him get tested a little bit. Uh, kind of, it's a little bit more. And, um, he's the type of guy that I feel like if he wins the title, he'll just get better. Or he could, you know, almost like Woodley in some degree. You know, I mean, he's good. He's good enough to hold it. But is he is he the next thing? I don't know. You know, who is the next thing? Right. I don't really want to think about it. Who is the next guy? Who's the guy? You know? Like he was Khabib for a minute, but now we're like, yeah, he can't strike that great. And now it's you know? Connor's back, so. Yeah, and Connor's, you know, and then Connor is, Truly one of the greatest stories. And had he beat Mayweather, he would be one of the greatest stories ever. And yeah, I still, I still got my him. thoughts about that fight. Yeah. What, what are you it, thinking? There was a couple moments in that fight where I was, there was a head scratcher. There was two moments in the fight where he hit Floyd flush and had him a hurt and the ref stepped in to stop it. Yeah, they could have thrown. It looked weird. Think about the he, thing like it was thing. early. I think it was early, was it? He hit him in the he hit him on a counter and back Floyd up and he threw a couple punches to the temple on an awkward angle and the ref came in yeah. and stopped it because of the back of the head when there weren't any back of the head shots. Right, right. And then yeah. later on in the fight he hit him with a shot right an uppercut right into the sternum and it had Floyd stumbling back and he started throwing and the ref stepped in again and said low blow. Right. There was right, a famous yeah. boxer, I can't remember who, but said that fight was fixed because that shot was a clean flush shot to the body. Yeah, yeah you got to wonder now. I there's no proof of it, but... No. Now, if Floyd steps into MMA, then I might look at that first fight as fixed. <laughs> like <laughs> Floyd comes in, because he doesn't want to do MMA, and if he no. has a guaranteed outcome, then, yeah, he's going to set in. But I don't think he's just going to step into a cage at 42 years old and train for an MMA fight for to really risk anything. I just don't see it, but you, you never know. Yeah, I, I like to watch fights again. Sometimes I get a different perspective on it. And I haven't thought about that Floyd fight, but I do remember watching it, uh, looking at it, thinking it was a spectacle. And all right. the fixes in boxing over the years, I instantly had that taste in my mouth. Just I was like, what is this? <laughs> something seems up, right? Well, hey, I do got to teach my kiddos class at four. I should have probably warned you about that. I was going to tell Nick, too, if he's not available now, I can always call him back later this evening. or we can Yeah, he's going to contact you when we're done. I'll let him know. And then he's going to contact you because he's got – he's working tonight, and then he's got a couple of interviews tomorrow, so he's looking at a couple of days. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. And, 
remind me where you're out of again. You're out of Michigan. I'm out of Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, right. Well, I knew it was right there. You ever you ever been down to Colorado? No, my I've always wanted to. Man, you ought to come down for the 25th anniversary of UFC. Come down to the Pepsi Center. I'm know, actually I'm looking at that card right now. <laughs> you should you should definitely come down. I think Pennington's on it. But yeah, come down to the gym, hang out, meet uh, some of the people at 303, and you know, that's the 25th anniversary, so the UFC might be at 303. Last time the UFC was in Denver, half the card was at was at the 303 gym here, um, doing the workouts. <laughs> I know it's bizarre. I, that's you know, awesome, like, though. I know. I, I don't know if like the hotel had a bad workout room because usually when I go, we just go to the hotel and have a workout room. But yeah, Francis and Alvy and and literally half the card was actually here and was in Valentina fought. Um, but you know, I, I assume depending on who's on the card, we'll, we'll definitely be housing some people. And then the UFC is doing 25 acts of kindness and featuring 25 fighters, and one of them they'll be featuring is Rose, so they'll be down video and that week as well. So. Yeah, you should look into it, and if it's feasible, hit it's, me up, let me know. That's not, I'm definitely going to look into it, because I might be able to work something out. Yeah, man, it could be a tax write-off for you, huh? Make this a <laughs> legit business here, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and I was going to tell you, too, anytime you're going to do these talks, let me know. And, you know, once a month at least, if you want to set something up, I'd be glad to talk with you and, and um, any subject uh you know, MMA related, I, I'll just never shut up. And, <laughs> and if you if you plan for more than an hour, let me know too. It's like, hey, that's that's good. I, that's good for me. I've had a couple of interviews lately where I've had a couple of people who haven't said much, and then I've had a couple who have just nonstop talking, <laughs> which I prefer than the, the talking. It could, creates yeah. good conversation, especially yeah. when they know what they're talking about. That helps. Well, you're an easy talking to man, and and um, yeah, I'd love to have you come out in Denver. So. Look at that, and then get, get a hold of me and let me know if you, you want to talk. All right. uh, maybe after any of these UFCs, I'd be glad to talk to you. Uh, maybe after any of the pay-per-views, we'll, we'll right. just chat up. And, oh. and um, you know, I've, I've got a few minutes, though, if there's anything else uh, you wanted to touch base on. Um, we were talking about the Colorado card. I'm looking at it right now. It's not completed right now, but they have Yoder versus Cooper. Hmm. Rocky versus, De, I like to call her Derundamine. <laughs> and then I've never heard of Macy Barber or Maya Stevenson. Okay, Macy Barber. She's making her debut? Yeah, she there's no the profile picture champ, for her, so. Her. Yeah, she calls herself the future world champ. Keep an eye on this girl. She really is. Okay. All right, I, you say I, so. I, I will. Yeah, I trained in. with her. She actually beat up one of our girls. Oh. And uh, yeah, and then called out Rose. Oh, <laughs> of course she's in the UFC. Oh, was at the event. making a name for herself. And I know her dad. I know her dad's in It's a bit guy. soon, but oh man, well, their dad is groomed her to train ever since she was a young teen. She's been traveling around to Jackson, Trevor Whitman, 303. She goes everywhere um, to train, and she's basically quit all sports and is just done training full time. And her dad's been supporting this and at least 14 years old, and she's got a great coach in Ryan Schultz who I've coached with. Um, you know, she's a Colorado girl. She's tough, dude. I, she's got a long way to go. Yeah, she's only 4-0. Oh. Yeah, yeah. She, she's tough. She actually has got a future. Like, we, she, she's like, her daddy went up to Rose and Pat, and they were just excited. Totally disrespectful, though, man. This is the world champ. You don't, after you beat our fighter, which is awesome, and got our attention, run up and be like, we're coming for you. Like, <laughs> all right, we'll remember that. Right? Actually, it's like, yeah. Uh, I'd be having a little bit of confusion, like, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, we wanted to do well because we'll throw JD at her first. And, and I know I practice with her. We've watched her real close. She's too young. Um, yeah, like, for example, her and JJ would actually fight this weekend. JJ would just kill her. So she's got some time to go, you know. But keep an eye on her. She's a young girl that has got a lot of, you know, aspirations to be mm. champ. And she changed her name. I think she knew we were, we were kind of joking with her and saying future world champ. But you shouldn't say that and then expect to get invited to our camp ever. <laughs> but <laughs> she calls herself the future now. So she's just the future. And, hey, she might be, man. She's definitely she's definitely committed to, to being as, as good as you could possibly be in the time she's been allotted to train. So so that will be interesting. So there's some local talent there. And, uh, no. you know, like I said, J.J. wanted to be on that card. We're just still – 
uh, no, it's not full. So the last fight, yeah, we're like, wait a minute, JJ, we're not ready to jump right into camp, but at the same time, we are. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah. All right, Brandon, I'm, I got to run. I got four o'clock. Little four year olds, I go teach. But uh, if you want to pick it up again sooner, man, let me know. I really enjoy it. All you. right. Um, I appreciate all your support, man. And nope. you definitely tell Nick I'd like to uh, get in touch with him and and whatever we could talk sports gambling. I love to talk <laughs> MMA betting. So. You know, pass along my digits to him. I just let him know to get a hold of me. All right. All right, my brother. Well, you take care, man. Yep. And if there's uh, anything comes up, you just let me know. So should I just uh, text you then when something comes up, or yeah. okay, anytime, brother. Anytime. Okay. I mean, sometimes we can do a uh, that day type of thing. You know, if I can, no problem. So all right. Um, appreciate you guys, man. Yep. And, uh, I'll be in touch. Have a good day, and you too. Talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.